How many of you here believe that eating fat will make you fat? In this show, I separate fat from fiction. In just 21 days, we will transform how you eat and feel on every level. Give me 21 days, and together we can take back our health. I'm Dr. Mark Hyman. I'm the director of the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine. We address the root causes of disease. We don't just focus on your symptoms. We treat the body as a whole system. This is the new science of health. And the most powerful medicine we use is food. I have spent my career digging into the latest discoveries in science and nutrition and telling the truth about them and making them practical. Today, we get into the real story of why we get fat and what to do about it. How many of you here believe that eating fat will make you fat? That the fat that passes by your lips will end up on your hips? Yeah, see, if you think that's true, then you need to watch the rest of this program. If you believe that the secret to losing weight is to eat less and exercise more, then you're in for a shock. You see, science has proven that idea completely wrong. And hidden in that message is the awful idea that it's your fault that you're overweight. A message that's been pushed on us by the government, by doctors, nutritionists, and the food industry. I mean, the American Beverage Association and our own government websites have the same weight loss advice. It should make us wonder. They tell us, hey, if you just stopped eating so much and got off your butt and started exercising more, we could solve our obesity epidemic. But how's that working out for all of you? Probably not too well, considering seven out of 10 Americans are overweight, and one in two Americans has prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Even scarier is that almost one in four teenagers has prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. So if eating less and exercising more isn't the answer, what is? Well, I'm about to share the most important nutrition discovery of the last 50 years. Making this diet fix is the single best thing you can do for health, weight, and longevity. But before I share this discovery with you, I want to make you a promise if you watch this show. Now, I've taken all the geeky science, because I'm kind of a science nerd, and I've turned it into a step-by-step, 21-day plan to help you lose weight, all while eating luscious, deeply satisfying foods, without restricting calories or starving yourself. And as a side effect, you can prevent and reverse most chronic diseases and feel better fast. In just a few weeks, you can get rid of what I call FLC syndrome. Do you know what that is? That's when you feel like crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hitting the reboot button on your whole body. So how do I know this works? Well, first, because it's based on the latest science, and second, because I've used it on thousands of my own patients with amazing success. Take Betty, who had type 2 diabetes and followed this program, and in just the first three days, she reported getting off 52 units of insulin, and in a month, she lost 36 pounds. Or Roger, who lost 10 pounds in the first 10 days, his cholesterol dropped 100 points and his triglycerides dropped 300 points. And guess what? His asthma, his reflux, his migraines, and his fatigue they all went away. So what did Betty and Roger and hundreds of my patients do? How were they able to lose up to a pound a day and get off so many of their meds and feel better? It was super simple. They ate more fat. That's right, F-A-T. It used to be a four-letter word, but now we know that if you want to lose weight and feel good and prevent heart disease and diabetes and dementia and cancer and live longer, you need to eat more fat. No, and I'm not talking about French fries and cheesecake or deep dish pizza. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm talking about a whole new world of healthy, delicious fats. I'm sure you're asking yourself, how could that be true? I mean, haven't we been told by health experts and medical and nutrition associations and our government agencies that we should eat less fat for two big reasons? First, that eating fat makes us fat. And second, that fat 
causes heart disease. Well, guess what? Americans have faithfully followed that advice over the last 50 years, and we become fatter and sicker than ever. I recently met with a leading cardiologist at the number one heart hospital in the world, the Cleveland Clinic, and to my astonishment, he said, I think we got the whole story on fat wrong, maybe even saturated fat. Yes, it is true that the fat on our bodies is making us sick and causing us to die early. But the logical leap that the fat we eat creates the fat on our bodies is just dead wrong. Now, it's an understandable mistake. I mean, intuitively, this notion that if you eat fat, it will turn into fat on your body makes a certain amount of sense, right? It's the same word. It even looks the same. And then there's the math, right? Nutritionists have long warned us that fats like olive oil or nuts or avocados have more than twice as many calories, about nine calories per gram, as carbs, like bread and pasta, or proteins like steak or chicken, which have four calories per gram. So they tell us if you eat less of it, you can lose weight and feel better. They say it's all about the calories. But as you will learn in this program, food is so much more than just calories. Food is information. And the information in fat is so different from the information in sugar and refined carbs. The whole calories in, calories out theory of weight loss has been completely discredited by science. But most doctors and nutritionists and policymakers still promote this outdated and harmful message. Now, I've spent my whole life digging into the science. I've reviewed thousands of research studies, and I've treated tens of thousands of patients over 30 years. Yes, I'm that old. <laughs> and it is very clear what works and what does not. And of course, I want everyone to love their food. But even though you can't have your cake and eat it too, you can have your fat and eat it too. And fat is what makes food taste so good. Now, here's the secret the food industry does not want you to know. Sugar and refined carbs are highly addictive. And they drive you to overeat. And they slow your metabolism. Fat, on the other hand, works by cutting your appetite and speeding up your metabolism. But the food industry wants you to eat more of their products. Over dinner one night, a top executive at one of the big soda companies told me how excited he was that they'd cultured human taste buds in the lab. And now finally, they could test chemicals and foods on those taste buds to see which produced the most powerful addictive properties. I'm not kidding. So now you know the sugar story. Let's get back to fat. Here's what the science does show. If you eat fat, you get thin and reverse heart disease and type 2 diabetes and more. But I'm not talking about French fries or soybean oil that's in all of our processed foods. Here's what happens when you eat a diet high in good fats, a diet full of real whole foods, a mostly plant-based diet that is also low in sugar and refined carbs. Your body will burn more fat and function better. Now imagine by now you're confused and might be thinking, has Dr. Hyman lost his mind? Well, don't worry, I was confused too. And for years, I recommended a low-fat diet to my patients and ate it myself, but not anymore. I love fat. I eat fat, and I tell all my patients to eat a lot of it. Here's why. Overwhelming scientific proof tells us that eating fat is the fastest road to weight loss and health. That's why the government had to change its stance on fat. After almost 40 years of telling us to cut the fat, the 2015 U.S. Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee, which is a group of experts that help set our dietary policy, eliminated any restriction on dietary fat. And more shocking, they said, oops, uh, we got the cholesterol story wrong too. In fact, their exact wording was, cholesterol is no longer a nutrient of concern. Gotta love that, not a nutrient of concern. Oops, never mind. I guess we suffered through all those egg white omelets for nothing. <laughs> In this show, I separate fat from fiction. And I will tell you how to stay healthy and lose weight and reverse chronic disease by eating more fat, not less fat. So what happens when you eat fat? Well, your triglycerides normalize, your cholesterol improves, people get off their insulin, and chronic symptoms go away. No more FLC syndrome. Not to mention you feel alert and focused and amazing. In just 21 days, you will change not only how you think about fat, we will transform how you eat and feel on every level. 
So now let's look at why we're sicker and fatter than ever. What happened? How did we get into this big, fat mess? Well, it all started with the best of intentions. In 1980, the government's first dietary guidelines told us to eat less fat. Unfortunately, that advice was based on very shaky evidence. And then it got worse. In 1992, we got the infamous food pyramid. And you know what? At the bottom of the pyramid were carbs. We were told to eat six to 11 servings of bread, rice, cereal, and pasta every day. And oh boy, did we listen. Giant bagels, <laughs> monster muffins, big plates of pasta were suddenly the new health food. And at the tippy top of the pyramid were fats and oils, which we were told to use only sparingly. The food industry jumped on that bandwagon and created everything from low-fat salad dressing to fat-free yogurt to low-fat desserts to low-fat tomato sauce, all full of sugar. That started the biggest public health disaster of our time. Now the science has proven that sugar and carbs are the true cause of obesity and heart disease, not fat. Every year, the average American consumes about 152 pounds of sugar and about 146 pounds of flour every year per person. Now, I'm not having that much, which means some of you are probably having a little more. <laughs> Actually, flour raises your blood sugar more than table sugar. These are pharmacologic doses of sugar. Sugar is deadly at those doses and causes obesity, which is linked to increased cancer. It also causes type 2 diabetes and heart disease and dementia, which they now call type 3 diabetes. I think of sugar as a recreational drug. I like to drink tequila, but I don't have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> you can have sugar, but use it sparingly and occasionally. So what happens when you eat pasta and bread and cereals and rice and sugar in any form? Well, you know that belly fat, what some like to call a muffin top or a spare tire, is caused by anything that spikes your blood sugar. And when your blood sugar spikes, you turn on the fat storage hormone. That's called insulin. And here's a shocker. It's not fat that causes abnormal cholesterol in your blood. It's actually sugar. The problem is that most of us who are overweight or who have chronic diseases like heart disease or type 2 diabetes are carbohydrate intolerant. We crave sugar and carbs, and our bodies love to store belly fat. We just look at a bagel, and we gain weight. Now, you know who you are out there. Now, I went to medical school in the early 80s at the heyday of the low-fat craze, and I avoided fat, and I told my patients to eat a low-fat diet. I shunned oils and butter and any fat. And I binged on that so-called healthy stuff, right? Whole wheat bread and big bowls of pasta. I would eat a half a pound of pasta at a sitting. And bagels, well, they were my best friend. And then my body started to change. I developed these, like, love handles. My belly got a little bigger. My pant size increased two inches. My body just seemed more flabby. I was running every day and jogging, but I just kept getting bigger. And by the time I was 35, I'd gained 15 pounds. And I thought it was just normal aging. But I was still afraid of fat, and I couldn't lose the weight. But over the last 10 years, study after study proved both the dangers of sugar and flour and refined carbs and the benefits of fat. And I began to change my own eating habits, and I told my patients to change theirs. I told them to cut the sugar and the refined carbs, and eat more fat. Now, before I started recommending this to my patients, I'd never had a patient lose 100 pounds, or get off their diabetes meds, or their insulin, or drop their cholesterol 100 points, or their triglycerides 300 points in just a few weeks. Never. I mean, one patient who could never lose weight and had a cholesterol over 300 started eating up to 70% of her diet as fat, which I wouldn't recommend for everybody, and included lots of grass-fed butter and coconut oil, both those deadly saturated fats. And guess what happened? Her cholesterol plummeted to 190 from 300. And her triglycerides dropped 200 points, and she lost 20 pounds. I could hardly believe it. And the changes in my own body were remarkable, too. Not only did I have more mental focus and more clarity because the brain runs better on fat, but I also lost those 15 pounds, and yes, even those love handles. And now, at 55, I'm more muscular and fit than ever. And I feel younger and more energetic than ever. And I exercise even less. In fact, I am on the eat more 
exercise less plan. <laughs> Just ask my friends and family. Now here's what I really want for you, to connect the dots between what you eat and how you feel. You know, food is the most powerful drug on the planet. That's why the secret of weight loss and health is focusing on what you eat, not how much you eat. When you focus on the what, real whole foods with lots of good fat, the rest takes care of itself. You can literally upgrade your biological software with your fork. It's the most powerful tool you have to transform your health and your life. Food works faster, better, and is cheaper than any medication. And all the side effects, well, they're good ones. What you put at the end of your fork is far more powerful than anything you find in a prescription bottle. Over a thousand people experience this for themselves on my Eat Fat, Get Thin program. On average, the weight loss over 21 days was about seven pounds. Some lost up to 46 pounds in total. And now before the program, 49% of the participants reported almost constant sugar and carb cravings. And after the program, that number dropped to only 1%. And what about their FLC syndrome, where they felt like crap? Well, what was stunning to me was that their digestive problems, like bloating and gas and constipation and reflux, they all got better. And their energy, their mood, and their joint pain, their muscle aches and headaches, they went away. And their sinus problems and post-nasal drip and allergies all improved. Even their skin problems and their mood and sleep all dramatically got better. There is no drug on the planet that can do all that and more. Why is it that these people get so much better so fast? Because the program in Eat Fat, Get Thin is really not about weight loss. It's about providing the right information, known as food, and I mean real food, for your body to create its own health. Losing weight and getting rid of chronic symptoms and diseases is simply a side effect of creating health. The secret is this. It's taking out the bad stuff and putting in the good stuff. It's that simple. And it doesn't take months or years, it takes days. But don't take my word for it. Here's what Heather, one of the participants in the program said. She said, before I started this, I had no idea how much inflammation I had. Nine days in, and I didn't look like the same person anymore. She said, my biggest challenges in life were stomach and intestinal pains and anxiety. She said, I had bloating and cramping and heartburn and random stabbing pains in my abdomen. And then there was the brain fog and lightheadedness and chest pressure and muscle spasms and aches and pains everywhere. She had that FLC syndrome. <laughs> she said, all these things are gone, or so rare, they don't bother me. I was simply amazed and happy and grateful. We changed how Heather thought about fat and how she felt. In this program, you will also experience a radical transformation of how you think about fat and how you feel. So stay with me, and I'm gonna tell you about the biggest, fattest myths about fat that keep us fat and sick and get in the way of effortless weight loss and health. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back, welcome back. Over the last 50 years, medicine and pop culture grabbed onto two big ideas that led to the demonization of fat. The first, was that eating fat makes you fat. Eat fat, get fat. The second was that eating fat causes heart attacks, and more specifically, that eating saturated fat causes heart disease. Raise your hand if you thought that saturated fat causes heart attacks or that eating fat makes you fat. The shocking truth is that both of these ideas are outdated, and they do not line up with our current science. Now, the way to get to the truth about these concepts is to dig deep into the biology of how we gain weight and how we get heart disease. You see, it all started with a big scientific mistake. It's the theory that all calories are created equal. Now, that's true in the lab when you measure calories in a vacuum, but not once you put them in your body where the information 
in those foods interacts with your genes, your hormones, your brain chemistry, your immune system, your metabolism, and even your gut bacteria. The idea that being overweight is just an energy balance problem, that all you have to do is eat less and exercise more to lose weight, sends a very negative message. They say, just eat less and exercise more. And if you can't, well, it's your own fault you're fat. If you stopped being such a lazy glutton and controlled yourself, you'd lose weight. That's what the government and the food industry keeps telling us. Well, tell that to the two-year-old who can't stand up because he's so fat. Or the three-and-a-half-year-old who has type 2 or adult-onset diabetes. Or the five-year-old with liver failure from fatty liver from drinking too much soda. Or the 400-pound 14-year-old who needs a gastric bypass to treat his type 2 diabetes. We are told, oh, there's no good or bad calories. It's all about moderation and more exercise. One of the big soda companies has created and funded an industry front group called the Global Energy Balance Network and funded scientists to promote this outdated theory that all calories are the same. The chair of the American Beverage Association, which used to be known as the American Soda Pop Association, <laughs> in sworn testimony to Congress said that in a, quote, well-balanced diet, we need two liters of liquids a day. I can go along with that. Soft drinks, he said, can be a healthy part of that intake. He said he rejected any argument that they're in any way harmful. Oh, really? Then why did a global study find that 184,000 people die every year from drinking sugar-sweetened beverages, from heart disease, diabetes, and cancer? Now, I never met a person who wakes up and says, hey, today, I'm going to see how much weight I can gain. <laughs> if you struggle to lose weight, it's not the result of a character defect but instead from bad advice based on wrong-headed ideas about calories. Dr. David Ludwig, who's an obesity and metabolism expert from Harvard, has done study after study proving that all calories are not the same. In human and animal studies, he's shown that eating fat speeds up your metabolism and promotes the loss of belly fat. And on top of that, it cuts your appetite and your cravings. In fact, in one study, he compared two groups eating exactly the same amount of calories. One group ate a very high-fat diet, about 60% fat. And the other group ate a very low-fat diet, about 20% fat. And guess what happened? The high-fat diet group burned 300 calories more a day without any more activity. That's like jogging an hour a day without ever getting off the couch. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> We have been focused on calories and quantity for so long that we miss the fact that quality matters more than quantity. It's almost impossible to control how much we eat because that is driven by powerful, primitive brain centers that control our survival. Asking people to eat less is like asking them to breathe less. <laughs> kind of sounds reasonable so long as you don't expect them to keep it up for too long. What matters more is what you eat, because if you eat the right foods, higher fat foods, you will turn off hunger and cravings and speed up your metabolism. One study found that kids who ate high fat snacks compared to those who ate high carb snacks were actually more satisfied and ended up eating less food overall. You see, low calorie, low fat diets may help you lose weight in the short term, but eating like that will make you miserable. Who likes eating dry cardboard? And you're gonna be hungry all the time. In fact, researchers put people on a 1600 calorie, 17% low fat diet for six months. Now initially they lost weight, but after 12 weeks, their bodies compensated by slowing down their metabolism. And after that, they didn't really lose much weight. Even worse, they were hungry all the time and they felt deprived. And on top of that, their extremities swelled, their hair fell out, their wounds didn't heal well, and they felt cold all the time, and their metabolism slowed down. Even worse, they all got depressed and lethargic and lost their sex drive and were obsessed with food. Now, to me, that doesn't sound like much fun. 
when the study was over, even worse, they binged and gained back 50% more body fat. Now let's dig into the second big fat myth, that fat, and especially saturated fat, causes heart disease. Now if you're like most of the patients I see in my practice, and most doctors, you're convinced that cholesterol is the root cause of heart disease. The truth is way more complex. Cholesterol is only one factor among many, and not even the most important one, that contributes to your risk of getting heart disease. You see, this idea took hold when Dr. Ansel Keys did a study in the 1950s looking at dietary patterns compared to heart disease in a bunch of different countries. He found that the countries that ate more saturated fat had more heart attacks. So it seemed like a good correlation. The thing is, he excluded countries from his studies like France and Switzerland that ate high fat diets and had lower rates of heart disease. By today's standards, it's a lousy study. And yet, it is the house of cards that our whole view of fat was based on. In 1984, almost 30 years after his first study, Dr. Keyes published a follow-up study that found no link between saturated fat and heart disease. But by that time, everybody believed that fat was the boogeyman, especially saturated fat. Turns out, cholesterol is actually not the enemy because so much of your body is actually made of cholesterol. Cholesterol is the building block for your sex hormones, like testosterone or estrogen or progesterone. Every single one of our cells and our cell membranes, especially our brain cells, contains cholesterol. So instead of focusing on eating less fat to reduce cholesterol, we need to focus on what types of fat we're eating. Eating the right kind of fat can actually improve your cholesterol. In the past, our understanding was very primitive. First, we looked only at total cholesterol. Now we know there are big, light, fluffy beach ball types of cholesterol that bounce off your arteries and don't cause heart disease. And they're all small, dense, hard, golf ball types of cholesterol that damage your arteries. And guess what gives you more of those protective beach balls? Fat, especially saturated fat. And guess what causes more of those dangerous golf ball like cholesterol. Sugar. Sugar, right. Now, I know it sounds crazy, and it's hard to believe, but recent scientific reviews have failed to find any link between total fat and even saturated fat and heart disease. But the word's just not getting out. The problem is that science is for sale. If a food company funds a study, it's eight times more likely to find a favorable outcome for the product they're studying, like dairy or soda. The American Heart Association gets hundreds of thousands of dollars to put their seal of approval on low-fat, high-carb foods, stuff like those sugary cereals. Even the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is an organization for registered dietitians that are entrusted with providing nutrition advice to patients, is on the low-fat bandwagon. In 2011, they had 38 food industry funders accounting for 40% of their income, including all the soda companies, junk food companies, and cereal makers. But slowly, the tide is turning back to a more balanced view of what's actually good for you and what's not. Finally, the government's 2015 Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee removed any limit on total fat or cholesterol. Eggs are back. Now even the American Heart Association and the American Cardiology Association has told us to forget about dietary cholesterol. Although they still suggest limits on saturated fat. In the Eat Fat Get Thin program, you're gonna learn which fats and which foods promote health and prevent disease and help with effortless weight loss. All this while eating delicious, deeply satisfying food because the thing that makes food the most satisfying is fat. Now this program will help you separate the good from the bad from the ugly fats. Your health depends on you understanding the world of dietary fat so that you can make the right decisions. 
So let's review a few of the most important fats, what they do, and which ones to eat, and which ones to stay away from. Like I said before, there's no such thing as simply fat. Sugar is sugar is sugar, but fat is not fat is not fat. Some fats are good, others are bad, and some, well, they're downright evil. The evil fat is something called trans fat or hydrogenated fat. It's also known as shortening. You know why they call it shortening? It shortens your life. <laughs> it's found in most store-bought baked goods, in most processed foods, because it is stable and it never breaks down. Did you know that a tub of shortening can still be good after 30 years in your cabinet? I mean, listen, you only want to eat foods that rot. <laughs> Even flies won't land on a tub of margarine. Trans fats have been estimated to account for over 30,000 deaths a year from heart attacks. And they also cause obesity and diabetes and cancer. So read labels and stay away. In fact, the Food and Drug Administration finally ruled that trans fats are not a safe food additive and must be eliminated from our food supply. Unfortunately, because of the food lobby, they're giving food companies a long, long time to phase it out. But you can phase it out starting today by reading the ingredient list and looking for the word hydrogenated. If there is anything in your kitchen with this on the label, just throw it in the garbage. Please, don't even give it to your dog. <laughs> okay, the next thing everyone agrees about is the benefit of omega-3 fats. These come from wild fish, wild game, eggs from chickens that are raised on pastures, and even grass-fed meat. You can also find omega-3 fats in some plant foods like flax and hemp seeds and chia seeds and walnuts. I call omega-3 fats the happy fat. You see, it's been found to be as effective for depression as Prozac. And omega-3 fats have been also found to be helpful in a whole bunch of diseases like autoimmune disease, ADD, for skin problems, asthma, even for heart disease, diabetes, and cancer, and even dementia. Why? Because these are all caused by inflammation, and omega-3 fats are anti-inflammatory. Now, the other fat that most agree is good for you is olive oil. Thank God, because it tastes good. <laughs> which is mostly a monounsaturated fat. But it still has about 20% saturated fat, which helps prove that saturated fats are not the bad guy. In one of the largest and one of the best done studies on diet and fat, people who incorporated a whole liter of olive oil every week into their diet reduced their risk of heart attacks by 30%. That's as much as statin drugs. Now, besides religion and politics, nutrition is one of the most divisive subjects. Why is that? Because nutrition science is super hard to do and the studies are imperfect, and people have really strong opinions. Now, you're entitled to your own opinions, but not to your own facts. So how do I make sense of all of it? Well, I look at the evidence, I put it through the filter of over 20,000 patients over 30 years, I add a dose of common sense, I look at the whole story, and then I make my recommendations, which evolve with the science. Okay, with that in mind, let's look at saturated fats. This is where so many get confused, and typically, objective scientists get super emotional. But recent studies have made us question our phobia of saturated fat. In fact, the prestigious Annals of Internal Medicine published a review on fat and heart disease and death. Now, this review included data from over 70 studies involving almost 600,000 people in 19 countries. And their conclusion? they could find no correlation with saturated fat or total fat and heart disease. In fact, they determined some saturated fats were actually protective against heart disease. So you can see why it makes sense that doctors get so confused, and so do the rest of us. Now, it seems like common sense, right? Cholesterol and fat in our diet ends up as cholesterol and fat in our arteries. But the science proves otherwise. Now, we do know that saturated fats in our blood are linked to more heart attacks. But the shocking fact is that in experiment after experiment, the saturated fat in your diet simply does not raise the levels of saturated fat in your blood. 
guess what does raise the levels of saturated fat in your blood? Sugar. That's right, you guessed it, sugar. <laughs> sugar and refined carbs produce dangerous saturated fats in your blood. We've also discovered that saturated fats that you eat increase the good types of cholesterol in your blood. How's that for a change in thinking? In fact, in the South Pacific, the Kativan people's diet consisted of 40% coconut oil, which is about 90% saturated fat. Butter, on the other hand, is only about 50% saturated fat. And guess what? They had no heart disease. Turns out coconut oil is a super fat that helps with weight loss and even brain health. I have some every day and just keep getting smarter and healthier. <laughs> Get this. Decades ago, farmers tried to give coconut oil to pigs to fatten them up. And guess what happened? They lost weight. <laughs> and when they fed them grain, like corn, which turns into sugar, they gained weight. But saturated fat can be bad under two conditions. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this. This is really important. When you consume saturated fat with sugar and refined carbs, it's deadly. Think bread and butter. In fact, if I had to choose between the butter or the bagel, I would choose the butter. The other condition under which saturated fat causes trouble and inflammation is if you are deficient in omega-3 fats. But here's the problem. 90% of Americans are deficient in omega-3 fats because they don't eat wild foods. And in a moment, I'm going to share how you can boost your omega-3 fats. Okay, now the last category of fat we need to talk about are the omega-6 fats that are found in refined vegetable and seed oils like corn and soy and canola and safflower, all the stuff we have on our shelves. These fats are very controversial. Now some scientists say omega-6 fats are deadly and others recommend that we drink them like lemonade. In one large randomized controlled study, omega-6 fats were reduced and the omega-3 fats were increased. And the result? Heart attack rates fell by over 70%. Now we've increased our intake of refined soybean oil by a thousand times since 1900. Our bodies don't know what to do with all that refined oil. The other problem is that most of the bad omega-6 oils are refined and they're full of chemicals like hexane and solvents used to extract the oils. And also, when they're heated, they become toxic and unstable, like when you fry foods. They oxidize or go rancid and they damage our cholesterol, causing heart attacks. These oils are extremely bad news. I want you to keep them to a minimum and use only unrefined or cold press oils. So what's an eater to do? Get yourself an oil change. <laughs> you want high octane fuel, not low grade fuel. I want you to eat more omega-3 fats. I want you to lubricate your body with extra virgin olive oil. And enjoy some saturated fats from coconut oil and even from grass-fed animal foods. At the same time, be sure to cut the sugar and the refined carbs. Eating more fat and more omega-3 fats and more saturated fat when it's combined with low sugar, low refined carb diet actually fixes and improves all the important heart disease risk factors. And that includes your overall cholesterol profile, your blood sugar, your insulin, your inflammation, your liver function, your sex hormones, and even your belly fat. And you know the best part? You can see improvements in all these areas in just 21 days, all while eating great food and never being hungry. So stay with me and I will show you exactly how you can do this. Welcome back, welcome back. We've got a big fat problem in this country with up to 70% of us being overweight and more than one in two of us having some type of chronic disease. And it's not because we eat too much fat. It's because we don't eat enough of the right kinds of fat. And we eat way too much sugar and carbs. But there is one special type of carb, it's a super starch that helps you lose weight. And I'm gonna tell you more about it in a minute. So how could it be that the very fat that we thought made us fat 
and cause heart attacks has been found to do the exact opposite. It's based on this radical discovery that all calories are not the same. Sugar calories make you fat, and fat calories make you thin. Fat actually shifts your body into fat burning mode, and it prevents fat storage and it cuts your appetite. And the carbs? Well, they shift your body into fat storage. They slow down your metabolism, and they increase your hunger and cravings. And metabolism is not a math problem. It's not about balancing energy or calories in and calories out. When you focus on quality and the composition of your diet, the rest takes care of itself. It's really that simple. When you focus on what you eat, the how much, it just takes care of itself. If you eat real food. You see, there's no such thing as junk food. There is just junk and there's food. Now, I've eaten low-fat, high-carb diets, and I've eaten low-carb, high-fat diets, and I've used all sorts of different diets with my patients. At points in my work, I've advocated for and prescribed low-fat vegetarian diets. But as the research emerged, which convinced me that fat was good, I changed my recommendations. Now, there's only one thing I'm interested in for my own health and for my patients. What do we do to stay healthy and fit and thin. We eat more fat. I want to tell you about a few people who followed this advice. Daniel was over 300 pounds. He had rheumatoid arthritis and chronic pain and a whole list of symptoms. That's actually why I call myself a holistic doctor because I take care of people with a whole list of problems. <laughs> he was on 15 different medications. In the first 40 days, he got off all 50 meds and was symptom free. In 10 months, he lost 110 pounds by eating 50% fat. And his wife, Rebecca, who I'm so happy to see here in the audience with us, who yo-yo dieted for years, lost 58 pounds. And Larry got off 42 units of insulin and all his diabetes meds and lost 50 pounds in three months. And another patient got off her insulin in just three days and she lost 18 pounds in the first 10 days. Amazing, right? Now, a lot of that at the beginning could be water weight, which is actually a good thing because fluid retention comes from inflammation. And inflammation makes you fat and sick. Now, let's make this real for you so you can achieve your goals. It's time to answer the question that you all have. How can I lose weight and improve my health using this approach? First, eat more fat. The good fats, olive oil and nuts and seeds and coconut oil, avocados, whole eggs, a little grass-fed butter, and wild fatty fish. And if you eat meat, eat grass-fed meats or sustainably raised poultry. Next, take out the bad stuff. Don't eat processed carbs. Don't eat refined processed omega-6 oils or sugars or dairy except for grass-fed butter and no processed meats like deli meats. This also includes artificial sweeteners because they also make us fat and diabetic by messing with our metabolism and our brain chemistry. Avoid anything with sugar or anything that turns to sugar, especially all flour products like breads and pastas, baked goods, crackers, and cereals. Now, after 21 days, you can have real sugar occasionally. But like I said, think of it as a recreational drug, not a dietary staple. Next thing I want you to do is stop focusing on how much you eat. If you focus on what you eat and choose the right foods and the right balance, your body's natural appetite control and healing systems will kick into gear. Next, power up with protein. Things like nuts and seeds and whole organic eggs and clean animal protein without hormones or antibiotics. And I want you to enjoy fish, low mercury fish, like salmon and sardines and herring and mackerel. And I want you to avoid tuna and swordfish, which are full of mercury. You see, protein helps you build muscle, and it cuts your appetite, and it speeds up your metabolism. Next thing I want you to do is eat slow carbs. These are healing carbs that don't jack up your blood sugar. So where do you find them? In plant foods, which are filled with powerful plant compounds 
called phytochemicals that have these amazing healing properties. They don't spike your blood sugar and you can eat as many of them as you like. I call it unlimited refills. These are foods like broccoli and cucumbers and greens, peppers, asparagus. All these are the non-starchy veggies. And really, this should make up about 75% of your plate. Next, I want you to eat real food. If it has ingredients you can't pronounce, that you don't recognize, that are in Latin, or not something you'd use in your own cooking, then stay away from them. I mean things like pesticides and antibiotics and hormones and other additives to food like preservatives and dyes and MSG and artificial sweeteners and other franken chemicals. If you feed your genes with the right information, they can program your body for effortless weight loss and optimal health. Now, almost everyone agrees with these nutrition concepts. Good fats, low sugar and refined carbs, good quality protein, and no junk. But then it gets a little sticky. Here are a few of the big areas of controversy that I address in the Eat Fat, Get Thin program. The first is dairy. Now, many experts, and yours truly, shun dairy, and for good reason. While some can tolerate it, for most people, it contributes to obesity, type 2 diabetes, even type 1 diabetes, heart disease, and even cancer. And it may increase the risk, not decrease the risk, of osteoporosis. Dairy also contributes to allergies, and asthma, and eczema, and post-nasal drip, and acne, and irritable bowel syndrome. Now, none of that sounds like any fun to me. <laughs> the next area of controversy is grains. For millions of Americans, gluten, which is found in wheat products, and products made with flour creates inflammation. And that leads to autoimmunity, digestive problems, depression, schizophrenia, obesity, heart disease, dementia, and even cancer. It also contributes to weight gain and to prediabetes. And guess what? Even whole wheat bread spikes your blood sugar more than table sugar. You might as well be drinking a soda. <laughs> and stay away from the gluten-free junk food. Gluten-free cake and cookies are still cake and cookies. <laughs> Next up is beans. Beans are a great source of fiber and protein and minerals. But they do cause digestive problems for some. And if you're diabetic, a mostly bean diet can trigger spikes in your blood sugar. The next area of controversy is meat. Now, the upshot is the research on meat is fuzzy because most studies don't look at the quality of the meat. Is it feedlot beef or is it grass-fed beef? And some studies do show that red meat increases heart disease and death, but other studies show the complete opposite. You see, the problem with most of the studies is that the meat eaters ate more sugar and refined carbs, more soda and fried foods, they exercised less, and they smoked and drank more. Of course they had more heart disease and type 2 diabetes. But all that aside, there are many ethical and environmental reasons to downsize your meat consumption. Choose quality over quantity. Think of it as a condiment, or as I like to say, condom meat. <laughs> eggs. Now, the bottom line here is that eggs are a great, low-cost source of protein. It's rich in nutrients, especially eggs from chickens that are raised on pastures or omega-3 eggs. They have no impact on cholesterol and are not associated with heart disease risk. Eggs are the new health food, and they're relatively cheap. Okay, now I want to share with you four special features of the Eat Fat Get Thin program that can really boost your results. The first is MCT oil. MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. Now this is the fat in coconut oil. It's a super fuel for your cells, and it's burned quickly. And it's also a powerful brain food that helps your brain work better. And it speeds up your metabolism, and it burns off that belly fat. It's also awesome to boost sports performance. I use it before I go on a long bike ride, and I take about a tablespoon or two every single day. The second special feature is potato starch. And I bet you're thinking, hey, Dr. Hyman, really? White, powdery starch, it's deadly, right? But there is this special type of starch. It's called resistant starch. And this resistant starch boosts your metabolism. It balances your blood sugar. 
It even fertilizes those good bugs in your gut that help you lose weight, and it even promotes deep sleep. Now, why is it called resistant starch? Because it can't be digested by you, but it is food for the good bugs that live in your gut and that help balance your blood sugar and promote weight loss. Now, my favorite source is potato starch. You can take between one and two tablespoons a day to help with sleep and weight loss and keep your gut healthy. But I want you to start slow because it can cause gas as your good and bad bugs duke it out. <laughs> now, the third special feature is probiotics. Probiotics, or the good bugs, help optimize your gut flora and can help you lose weight. Get this, bad bugs in your gut cause weight gain and type 2 diabetes. In fact, now this is a little gross, but I'm going to tell you this. In fact, when scientists conduct fecal transplants and transplant the poop from thin mice to fat mice or even thin people to type 2 diabetics, it triggers weight loss and can reverse diabetes. Now, poop transplants for obesity and diabetes sounds crazy, I know. And if it were me, I would much rather take probiotics and resist the starch. <laughs> The fourth special feature is a super fiber called PGX. It's a combo of a Japanese root called cognac, no, not the kind you drink, <laughs> and seaweed fibers. And it soaks up water and acts like a sponge, soaking up the sugars and the carbs in your gut so they don't spike your blood sugar or your insulin. And that's why it cuts your appetite and improves your blood sugar and helps with weight loss. In fact, one of my diabetic patients, she got off 100 units of insulin just by using this special fiber. And another lost 40 pounds. And that's why I recommend taking PGX before every meal during the program. Eat fat, get thin, is about putting the love and joy back into eating, about ending deprivation, about enjoying rich, satisfying foods without guilt. You can love foods that love you back. Fat is what makes food taste good. We're programmed to enjoy and thrive on fat. Bringing fat back into your diet will not only make you more fit and healthy, but it will also help you reclaim pleasure and joy in your relationship to food. So how does all this work? Well, the first step is all about the prep, about getting ready. You have to give your kitchen a makeover by getting rid of all the junk, or what I like to call the poison in our pantries. Think of it as a treasure hunt for toxins and non-food substances or food-like substances that make you fat and sick. We like to think of these as convenience foods. But tell me, how convenient is it to be depressed and overweight and tired and sick and taking a bunch of prescription meds? The food industry has hijacked our taste buds, our hormones, our brain chemistry, our metabolism by encouraging us to outsource our cooking and our food. We need to take our kitchens back. And you can do this, even if you've never cooked or don't know your way around the kitchen. When I helped with Fed Up, which was a powerful documentary about sugar and obesity, I went to the South to one of the worst food deserts in America. And I worked with a family who was on food stamps and disability. Now, they were severely sick. They were overweight. And they never cooked or knew how to cook. They wanted to do the right thing, but they just didn't know how. Everything they ate was highly processed and made in a factory. By showing them how to cook one simple meal made from real ingredients, from scratch, and giving them my cookbook and a guide called Good Food on a Tight Budget that's from the Environmental Working Group, they were able to cook real foods for themselves. And they lost 200 pounds as a family. We are only one meal away from changing the health of America. We need to take back our kitchens. We need to stop outsourcing our cooking to corporations. OK, so once you rid your kitchen of toxic inflammatory foods, you're going to restock it with the good fats and real whole food like we've talked about in the program. The next step is to start the 21-day plan using the delicious and satisfying recipes that come with the program. Or you can create simple, delicious meals by following the list of approved foods. You will also need a few targeted nutritional supplements. You see, nutrients are the grease that lubricate the wheels of your metabolism. And they also cool inflammation and optimize your gut flora. 
I recommend a multivitamin and mineral, fish oil or omega-3 fats, vitamin D3, carnitine, which helps with fat metabolism, probiotics for those healthy good bugs, and magnesium. We can create a healthy world by starting with our own health. All right, so we've blown up our big fat myths. We've separated fat from fiction. You now know why you need to get an oil change and why you need to cut the sugar and boost the fat to speed up your metabolism and prevent and reverse disease. I want you to wake up every morning feeling good and enjoying life and what you're eating. I want you to wake up and I want you to give your highest gifts to the world every single day. And finally, no more dragging yourself around with FLC syndrome. You don't have to feel like crap. This is my promise with this program, Eat Fat, Get Thin. Give me 21 days and together we can take back our health. Thank you. Woo!